गुड आफ्टरनून वेलकम टू आर सी आईज नवशिखर चैनल नमस्कार भारतीय पुनर्वास परिषद के इस नवशिखर चैनल के स्टूडियो से आ, में आप सबका स्वागत है आज हम अपना जो टेलीकॉन्फ्रेंस का शेड्यूल जारी रख रहे हैं और हमारी आज की टॉपिक जो आप देख सके सकते हैं आपकी टीवी स्क्रीन में हमने दिखाया था थोड़ी देर तक पहले तक प्रोस्थेटिक्स एंड ऑर्थोटिक्स एन इंट्रोडक्शन and practice that is the topic of the day and today in our studios we have two very experienced uh, experts who are going to talk discuss this topic with you to introduce you to them uh, we have on my immediate left is uh, dr sharad ranga who is the head of department of prosthetics and orthotics at the pandit deen dayal upadhyay institute for the physically handicapped which uh, Uh, most of us commonly uh, know as IPH in Delhi. He is also the manager of the workshop and uh, which looks after uh, manufacturing of aids and appliances for the ADIP scheme and also deals with the OPD at IPH. Uh, Dr. Ranga is also teaches prosthetics and orthotics and biomechanics uh, at the uh, bachelor uh, uh, level uh, courses that are run through IPH. He has a rich experience of about 30 years and uh, uh, many of you uh, may be aware that he was also the recipient of the national award from the President of India in 1999 for development of the artificial knee joint which is suitable uh, especially for Indian people. Uh, it was a project under our ministry's uh, uh, science and technology uh, mission mode program. Uh, Dr. Ranga also uh, conducted many outreach programs throughout the country for distribution of aids and appliances. He is a member of RCI's expert committee on prosthetics and orthotics and is also a member of the Bureau of Indian Standards for aids and appliances. Um, the other expert who is here with us uh, in our studio on my extreme left is uh, Mr. Rajni Sharma. Uh, he is a graduate in prosthetics and orthotics and also has uh, more than two decades of experience working in this field uh, earlier with the Indian Red Cross Society and then later with uh, for uh, over 10 years at the IPH. He is presently uh, deputy director at the National Trust and many of you may uh, be familiar with him from your if you are dealing with the National Trust. Uh, he has also looked after uh, the district disability rehabilitation center programs and other outreach activities of the government of India and has headed uh, different teams of master trainers, uh, particularly in reference to a specific project on flow reaction orthosis. He has vast experience uh, in working with uh, people with disabilities who use and need aids and appliances, artificial limbs and so on and is also involved with the academic programs at uh, the graduate and postgraduate level. Uh, Mr. Rajneesh Sharma is also a member of RCI's expert committee on prosthetics and orthotics. So uh, welcome sir, uh, Dr. Ranga and welcome uh, Mr. Sharma. Uh, I will pass it on to you now to discuss the topic of the day. So, we are given the topic uh, prosthetics and orthotics. First, I will give the definition part what is prosthetics and what is orthotics. Orthotics is the science. Orthotic means the replacement, the, the support to the weak musculature of the body part, is the Greek word. Prosthetic means straight. That means we have to support that particular limb for correction, prevention of the further deformity. And the appliance made for preventing of the deformity is called orthophif. And orthophif is the appliance. So, we like to give the definition of orthophif. We can the support. Uh, put it on full screen. Yeah. yeah. You can give the definition. It's a Greek word. Ortho means straight. And a plan fave? Yeah, yes, about that. About that. Yeah. Yes, we can see it yes. now. On and the a plan fave? 
added to a person to enable better use of that part of the body to which it is fitted. That means like a polio limb, patient is having the polio limb but it is not supported, patient cannot put the weight on that. So we are giving some sort of appliances, it's called orthosis and the person who are making these appliances are called orthotift. So this is the definition of orthosis. Orthosis may be given for upper extremity, lower extremity and spinal. In upper extremity, we are treating the upper limb so that person is having the limb but we can give some movement by means of some mechanical or technical joint with the theory of biomechanics. Same thing with the lower extremity, suppose per person cannot put the weight on the limb, but we are giving from orthosis is the support, so that we can support that limb which is not supported properly by the anatomical uh, skeleton. And we are giving some joint at the knee joint, ankle joint or hip joint, so that it is well fitted with the patient and he can use that and that is called orthosis. Here I would like to add uh, regarding the nomenclature of the orthotic systems. So broadly as Dr. Ranga has said, we can classify the orthosis into three main groups. One is upper extremity orthosis, spinal orthosis and lower extremity orthosis. So when we talk of upper extremity orthosis, uh, the nomenclature of different appliances or we can call it uh, orthotic appliances that can start from shoulder. So the one is shoulder, elbow, wrist, uh, hand orthosis. So the nomenclature that is the S, E, H, O, shoulder, elbow, wrist, hand orthosis, S, E, W, H, O. So that is the nomenclature. When the upper extremity orthosis is applied from the shoulder to the distant mode part of the upper extremity orthosis, that is to the tip of the finger. So in this case, one airplane splint is there which is given to the quadriplegics. You must have seen the persons whose arms are not working or one those who are studying the subject, they must be knowing about the bacterial plexus injury. So in, in those cases, the complete paralysis of the upper extremity is there. So we need to give a supportive appliance. So it comes under the category of uh, shoulder, elbow, wrist, hand orthosis. Then comes elbow, wrist, hand orthosis. That is E W H O. So when we need to work on elbow, wrist, and hand, including fingers and thumb, that uh, exist in the category of E W H O. Then we have W H O, wrist, hand orthosis. These are the uh, different static and dynamic orthosis provided. In for example, we give it in radial palsy radial nerve palsy when the raised drop is there. Uh, and then we have hand orthosis which include different kinds of splints. Then we have uh, finger orthosis or thumb orthosis. So these are different types of upper extremity orthosis. So these are basically different devices the, that you give for yeah. uh, uh, the upper, uh, upper, uh, upper uh, extremity. Yeah, or you can say in yeah. general, okay. yes. So these are, that's the one group. Then the another group is spinal orthosis. So again, we can uh, divide the spine into different segments. One is cervical region, then we have thoracic region, then we have lumbar region, then sacral region and coccyx. So based on the anatomical nomenclature, we divide our appliances as first is cervical orthosis, that is the uppermost part. Then we have uh, thoraco lumbo sacral orthosis, that is one segment. Then we also have CTLSO, cervico, thoraco, lumbo, sacral orthosis. Then we have uh, lumbo, sacral orthosis, LSO. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, then we have okay, sacral, okay. yeah. And uh, uh, in that also we have flexible, rigid, and semi-rigid. These are the three different uh, designs uh, based on the requirement of the patient. So that is for the spinal orthosis. Then we have lower extremity orthosis. Lower extremity orthosis, I'll go uh, quickly. That is, uh, starts from HKAFO, hip, knee, ankle, foot orthosis. Then we have uh, KFO, knee, ankle, foot orthosis. Then we have AFO, ankle, foot orthosis, as 
uh, we give in cerebral palsy cases afos are uh, predominantly commonly, yeah, commonly given that and we'll discuss about the material aspects also and then we have foot orthosis and shoe modifications or foot modifications okay. and if uh, it is given on one side it is called unilateral if it is on both the sides it's called bilateral right. so that's a sort of general sense okay. of this Thank you. nomenclature the orthotic appliance phase they are made up of the light material so that patient can tolerate the weight of that orthosis and it should be functionable. Usually we are making the appliance phase out of plastic. Okay. Nowadays the different plastics are available and they are very hard plastic but we have to make that appliance phase rigid as well as doable. Okay. And this appliance phase we have to take the measurement of the patient first. While taking the measurement we have to take care about the mechanic also. We have to use the knee joint, that means we have to make the knee joint so that patient can have the full range of motion at the knee. Same thing with the ankle joint, we have the different movement at the ankle, dorsiflexion and plantarflexion. While we are making the appliance phase, we have to see that the ankle should bend at dorsiflexion as well as plantarflexion. So these appliance phase are usually made up of polypropylene sheet and the polypropylene is easily available in India and it is very light and patient can use with the standard footwear. Previously, we have to give the conventional type of orthophase, which are heavy in weight. So, sometimes patient will reject that appliance phase and they, without appliance phase, they can use they, uh, or they walk. They tend to uh, yeah, yes. reject it and not use so it at all. We, we have to take care about the material also. Okay. It should be easily available and it will be durable and patient can easily accept that appliance phase. Okay. So, this is regarding the materials. Okay. So, as the part of presentation, we will also go uh, step by step. We'll show different uh, materials available. So, whenever it will come further during the discussion, we will go for that also. Yeah. I would also like to uh, uh, remind our viewers who are watching this program to uh, make a note of the telephone numbers which we will be scrolling at regular intervals at the bottom of your TV screen. Uh, I'd just like to repeat the numbers. You can call and uh, uh, speak to Dr. Ranga and uh, Mr. Sharma and ask them to clarify any questions or doubts that you may have. Uh, the numbers are 011-265-11611 and 011-265-11613. You can also fax us at 265-11609. So please make a note of these numbers and do uh, feel free to contact us and uh, discuss uh, any aspects of this topic with the experts directly. So we can continue with the discussions. So these appliances we are making, we have to take the measurement. In plastic, we have to take the mold. So while taking the mold, we have to take care about the total contact aspect. So we are taking the mold out of plaster of Paris bandages. And after that, we make the negative calf. And with the negative calf, we just modified the calf. And after modifying, we just do the lamination of the plastic. After doing the lamination, we'll do the trim line of the appliances. And as per the comfort of the patient, we will give the trim line and also the velcro strap so that patient can easily wear that particular appliances. So this is regarding the appliances for the lower extremity as well as for the upper extremity. In upper extremity, usually we have to give a non weight bearing type of orthophase and in that orthophase we have to give the function of that particular part through the orthophase like the hand sprinting. In the hand sprinting we have to move the finger joints, the DIP, PIP and knuckle joints and patient cannot do this type of movement so that we will attach some type of spring or rubber band so that patient can do the normal movement and other movement will be taken care by the rubber strap. So these are some of type of the appliances for the upper extremity. Same thing with the elbow, we are giving the joint of the spring loaded joint so that patient can do the elbow movement as well as the shoulder movement. And while he doing the movement so that he will not develop the contracture. If he is not developing the contracture, he can do the activity of daily living with the fault of these appliances and he can easily wear these appliances. This is regarding the upper extremity orthosis as well as the lower extremity. In lower extremity, patient can put the full weight and while walking, he can just lock the knee joint. For that, after locking the knee joint, he can walk very easily with the normal, nearly normal gait cycle. And this caliper will be suspended with the pelvic band. Now the 
plastic appliances were very common for the we are using the different technology and that is called quadrilateral socket in the quadrilateral socket patient can take care of the hip joint also and knee joint he can lock or sometimes if the muscle power is good at the knee we can also give the knee joint free so that patient can walk very easily and he can use it so reddin will say about the how the appliances is uh, take care of properly because this is the patient property we can say and he have to care in a very systematic manner and he have to do the regular follow up also with the orthotist so that maximum type of appliances can be long life for so regarding the that, orthotic care he yeah, say now the screen will be shown to you uh, which depicts the prevention and correction of deformity these are different main purposes of the orthotic devices uh, so as i said prevention and correction of the deformity uh, the orthosis not only prevents but also corrects the deformity like prevention in which sense means whenever there is fracture there is uh, there is possibility of formation of contracture so initially when the orthopedic surgeon applies the plaster and healing is there functional cast braces are given so these functional cast braces also act as the preventive also develop the preventive mechanism while applied so this is called correction and uh, this is called prevention and correction part is a uh, taken care when whenever the recovery phase in upper extremity while applying the splints for the upper extremity like we have radial nerve palsy this drop is there so uh, this gradual rec recovery is quite gradual and the orthotic appliance that helps in the gradual recovery process so we also have like facial palsy splints given in facial palsy cases facial palsy as you all know uh, may be familiar uh, there is paralysis of the facial muscles so one pull over type of splint is there uh, that is attached from the mouth uh, face muscles uh, uh, are uh, made active by making a small via splint then uh, it is the these appliances orthotic appliances are are also uh, give relief from the pain relief from the pain in the sense by giving non weight bearing designs so these are incorporated then immobilization and protection then we have upper extremity orthosis as upper extremity orthosis as i explained to you uh, uh, splints which are given as i explained uh, different levels of also then we have fingers uh, wrist and immobilizers new aeroplane splints as i mentioned earlier dynamic hand splints and uh, braces so uh, the broad categorization of the splints can be static as well as dy dynamic static is synonymous to non functional splints or non dynamic splints and then we have functional or dynamic splints the purpose of dynamic splints is to uh, assist the activities and the static splint is to provide the support part so this is the basic uh, nomenclature uh, and uh, description and these splints are readily available in the market and uh, are available till on tailor made basis also now i wanted to ask you yeah, one question please. what is the difference between a splint and a brace if i may ask as a lay person yes would, could you uh, clarify uh, this yeah yeah a splint and brace are closely li related term but the basic difference is Uh, 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 the brace word includes a sort of plastic braces or conventional orthotic appliances are called braces okay. that's a uh, broader term whereas the splints are for uh, meant for specific purposes and are for generally for the immobilization part like we have thomas splint thomas splint uh, is fitted by the orthopedic technician or orthopedic surgeon yes. so th that is uh, that works as a traction also okay. so that comes under the category of the splint okay. uh, likewise we have uh, wrist drop splint so that gives a supportive part so uh, that is uh, splints are very much focused for a specific uh, work and these are the supportive sort of splint non dynamic 
in most of the cases okay. whereas braces can be dynamic as well as static okay. but uh, these are very related terms okay. both can be used uh, at same level and different level okay. so it's a matter of uh, giving names okay. actually these terms are common because somebody saved their braces is for support and somebody saved their printing if printing is also is the support only and like the in the caliper and orthophase the actual exact word is orthophase and somebody saves the ortho if printing or braces or somebody says caliper yes caliper, I, is, yeah, also caliper is what ah, we these uh, are the layman commonly know as as but now person. the new uh, terminology of came just from uh, the dhfa says about the tflo hkfo yes, afo yes. these are the terminology this is the uh, actual uh, yeah. correct A scientific uh, nomenclature, scientific nomenclature yes. yeah okay otherwise these are the same if printing caliper braces support okay and somebody says juta These yes, are some yes. of the things. Yes. Yeah. And one of uh, the important component of this uh, for, uh, is uh, gaiters. Okay. Uh, gaiters are the I would like to specifically mention here are the in the exist in the category of knee orthosis. So okay. uh, gaiters are given to stop the knee to buckle. Oh yes. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, So Or we also use gaiters. Uh, Do you uh, use gaiters yeah, to straighten yeah. the elbow, for yes, instance, yes, for yeah. a child who has a contracture? Yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, this is made out of generally uh, out of the cloth yes. uh, and reinforcement with the help of metal strips or plastic strips is there and that is tied with the help of velcro that's yes. an adhesive material and uh, uh, the objective is to keep the joint straight, straight so give is an given in elbow as well as in knee so that also. we can save the limb from deformity yes yeah. and from becoming yes. uh, tight and contract yes. developing contractures yeah yeah okay I would like to uh, share about something about the orthopedic shoes also. Okay. So orthopedic shoes are given in different general conditions of the foot, different foot disorders. Uh, like uh, we we have a CTEV, congenital talipus equino varus, uh, or pes planus, or pes plano valgus. So this pes planus and pes plano valgus is synonymous to the uh, flat feet. These are why quite common okay. in India. and uh, go, uh, we as professionals would emphasize that there should be ample awareness generation among school authorities that every child has to be seen from that point of view also whether th the uh, uh, child is having in say a free school age uh, especially foot. yes flat foot and uh, and ctv that can be detected at the time of uh, just after birth also pediatricians are there uh, along with the gynecologist they see uh, whether Uh, the child is having ctv or not they that's the part of the general examination ctv so, is ctv stands for congenital talipus equino equino varus. Varus. so in this case the foot it it said uh, it condition in. if uh, remains untreated it leads to deformity this is not what we call club foot is it correct yeah 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 i'm yeah, asking yeah, you yeah, referring yeah. to the common terms yeah, yeah. Correct. Yes, so that we can draw the yeah, commonly yeah. known as club foot. Club foot. Okay. See, with the orthophase, we are correcting the deformity. So we are using the engineering principle that is called three point pressure or two point pressure. Three point pressure means two pressure from one side and corrective pressure from counter pressure from the other side. So that if the foot is like this, so that we will give the three pressure and correct it. Okay. So the this is the most common principle used in making of all the orthotic appliances. It's called three point pressure and two point pressure. Okay. So it's very common to correct the deformity. In caliper also we are using the same principle. In all this printing also we are using the same principle. And usually we are making these uh, this total contact appliances. Total contact means maximum area of the body is covered. So that we are not giving pressure at the particular point. It is distributed. Is the total see. contact that means it is distributed equally um, amongst equally. Equally other parts yeah. of the yeah. body. Yeah. Okay. So this is very common. So we are using all the engineering and biomechanical principle while making the appliance. Where to put the weight? Where to not to put the weight? Which are the sensitive area? Which are the area Private where areas. patient can tolerate the weight? In the uh, polio caliper also, we are giving weight at the ischial tuberosity. So while walking, he will give the uh, he will taking the full weight on the tuberosity, and after the weight. distributed on the caliper for so that patient can walk very easily okay so this is a distribution of what is fine for the biomechanics so as we are talking about ctv uh, shoe, uh, shoes and then about ctv so there are the shoes uh, meant specifically for uh, ctv 
uh, food disorders. So, uh, these are the special shoes. I, um, I would like to mention here that it, the, some specific modifications are there in the shoe and which these shoes are to be made by the uh, qualified or experienced orthopedic shoemakers. Okay. Because uh, generally what I seen people go to the cobbler and say uh, make these mild, uh, mild alterations or minor alterations, that is not proper. The person uh, or the patient concerned or the parents of the uh, child. child concerned should meet the orthotist before getting the appropriate appliance because as per the RCI also, Rehabilitation Council of India norms also, as per the act, it is mandatory free uh, for and uh, every uh, individual has to check whether uh, he or she is meeting to the qualified prostate is an orthotist or not. Okay. That is in the interest of the child. Yeah. So once the child goes for the CTV shoes, okay. proper we shoes are We have a telephone uh, call. Yeah, please, a quest please. person is calling in for a, with a question. We may take that. Hello. hello. Yes, please ask your question. Hello. Hello. Yes, hello. hello. I can hear you. Please ask your question. Hello. 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 Plastic Society of Tamil Nadu. Yes, please ask your question. Hello. Hello, I can hear you. Hello. 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 Hello, I can hear you. Can you explain about two point pressure system? Okay. He wants, this is a caller calling from Spastic Society of Tamil Nadu. He wants you to explain about the two point pressure system. Yes. See, Sometimes the limb is like this thing or the finger is like this thing. So, we can give the two pressure like this only. One is exactly in the joint and other is from the other area or we can use this type of lever. This is like a lever. So, this is corrected. Okay. Is there any other example that you would like to share about this uh, two point system? I do not know. I mean, I presume I am hoping that the caller has got. Uh, 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 and it is a three point, point pressure, pressure system. But two is also sometimes we are giving, and three point is very common for that we can give the counter pressure also F1, F2, and for counter pressure F3. Okay. So, how when do you normally use a say what he suggested yes. two point uh, system? See, suppose if, uh, finger is like this thing, so we will just put one weight here and one here. Okay. So, it is correct. Okay. Only two pressures, that is like a couple type of thing, okay. F1, F2 and it is correct. So, when we apply uh, force on the tap, yes. so that is a sort of uh, uh, indicative of uh, that okay, example. Okay. That is a couple mechanism, that is the, mm. uh, the technical uh, yeah, yeah, approach yeah, yeah, to yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So that is uh, some sort of relevance you can uh, understand. Okay. Well, I hope uh, the caller's uh, quest, uh, is satisfied with the answer. Please call again if you or you can fax us if you wish for more clarification or to discuss this point further. We can continue till oh, then yeah. Uh, yeah. with so, what you were saying. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I hope we should continue with this uh, yes, yes. issue. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. CTV is uh, one part and likewise we have uh, CTV modifications. So, in CTV modifications, the shoe has to be very straight straight and stiff inner border, uh, one special heel called C and E heel. C stands for crooked, E stands for elongated, okay. crooked and elongated heel. So, the elongation is on the lateral part of the shoe. And uh, then we have lateral wedge also. The foot is elevated from the lat lateral side, from the outside. Lateral means the outer aspect okay. or medial is the inner, inner aspect, aspect of the shoe or foot. So, uh, these are the standard modifi modifications and the orthopedic shoe has to be high ankle shoe and it should uh, accommodate the toe uh, in such a way that uh, no discomfort should be there for the user. Okay. So, appropriately fitting a shoe should be given and uh, it is having laces or nowadays velcro shoes are given. So, th these are the general uh, recommendations for the CTV shoes. Then we have flat fit shoes. So, for flat fit shoes, we have arch support, generally uh, longitudinal arch which is the affected in most of the cases. So, uh, arch supports are given. Arch supports again are of, of three types. One is uh, soft, semi-rigid and rigid. So, soft are made out uh, of uh, soft rubber and are provided in 
uh, children okay. and uh, semi rigid our supports are provided in the age group of 7 to 8 years in the middle age group and hard or uh, for rigid older, are support for, for uh, but yeah. these uh, th uh, what you were saying these and, are and not only this not only this i would like to add here uh, these are not indicative of the age these are also related to the type of the uh, problem or type of the deformity or type of the condition okay. which uh, the foot has please uh, yeah what the point that I was trying to make was this is quite a common uh, uh, modification modifi yeah. modification that uh, yes, uh, yes. often a lot of people do uh, go in for. But is there any, uh, I, I mean you were just saying that it is not necessarily restricted to age. In fact, that was what the question I had was whether there is any age by which you can correct it or you can correct it even in adulthood, this uh, problem of uh, See, uh, the not foot having an appropriate the, art. As and when it is detected, it has to be... Uh, uh, it uh, the process of correction should be on okay. from the that point of view. So that's why uh, I'm emphasizing again and again that the um, person concerned should contact the qualified prosthetist and orthotist only. Okay. Usually in the child the bones are very mild. So it's so easier that, uh, to correct yes, at an yes. early age. It is easy to give in the early childhood or from this thing at the age of walking age yeah. so that it will be corrected in a very soft material or sometimes rigid also. Otherwise, it requires a corrective surgery. Okay. Basically, aspect. I think this underscores a uh, point that we have repeatedly uh, come across in all our discussions, the need for uh, early intervention, early yes. detection yeah. and yeah, early, early intervention. Yeah, yeah. I think that is goes without saying that that is very critical yeah. because you save uh, so much precious time and uh, prevent uh, problem from become compounding itself. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and yeah, sometimes the problem is irreversible. Yes. So that can be checked within uh, time frame. And uh, then there is another condition of the foot that is post-traumatic. Uh, and sometimes it is post-pathological also. Uh, so in post-traumatic cases, some accident is there, uh, some injury is there, the foot is deformed. So in those cases, uh, special orthopedic shoes or molded shoes are given. So these shoes are pr uh, prepared or made after taking the cast. As Dr. Ranga explained to you uh, about the cast taking procedure in case of orthotic and prosthetic appliances. So the same uh, procedure is adopted for making molded shoes or orthopedic shoes for deformed foot. So uh, then the negative cast is prepared, positive cast is prepared, then the shoes is made by the cobbler after making different patterns. So that's the skill of the orthopedic shoemaker under the guidance of orthotist. Okay. Can we go on to see what else you have in your uh, presentation? These are some then, examples yeah, of... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You just show the you diagram of KFO and KFO different parts and components. That you can see from the presentation. This is lower extremity orthosis. Uh, so term KFO, as we explained to you, is knee, ankle, foot orthosis. So there you can... Uh, uh, fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this. Uh, this these are the two example. straps. Yes. Yeah. That you can see. Then. Then we have. These are the uh, this surgical is one, shoes yeah, that yeah, you were yeah. talking about. Okay. So this is a shoe of, in fact, uh, one of the employee working in IPH in the Institute for the Physically Handicapped. Okay. Prepared there only. So he is having a deformed foot, and he's work. He's a successful employee there, working very well, very happy, <coughs> and satisfied. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Then we have a cervical collars uh, of hard. Uh, then we have four post uh, braces, uh, jack. Then we have spinal. Or these are the different parts of spinal orthosis. <coughs> See the cervical collar. Yeah. Uh, we are giving to the patient who are having cervical spondylitis or from per person having the bree neck or torticollis collar. So these made of hard collar and. This is very effective and patient can just have the immobilization of that particular part and he will be comfortable and uh, other treatment will be given by orthopedician. And same thing with the spinal jacket, spinal support, lumbosacral belt and we are also giving a corrective brace for the scoliosis, the, the spine deformity is called scoliosis. The most common orthosis is called a Milwaukee brace. Milwaukee brace is the brace 
which is giving the correction also, correction, support, and if pen can be corrected and before the age of 14, 14 years. And if it is correctable, then it will be you, the brace is well ventilated. We are giving again the three point pressure, one is at the girdle and other is the chin support. And Milwaukee brace is very common for the scoliosis patient and other patient uh, uh, braces are called if pinal or if the fomai brace. Fomai is sternum, occipit, <coughs> mandibular immobilization. They follow also ready-made brace and we can fit to the patient and patient is also comfortable and he can have all the this thing movement restricted and he will be do his activity of daily living in a normal and other if spinal orthophys if the ash brace ash brace is given for the back or back also and it is also a supportive and corrective brace the full form is anterior spinal uh, hyperextension brace correct that is ash brace and if you ready made brace yeah, it will yeah. be available in the market as per the prescription patient yeah. can just purchase the brace and you right from the uh, purchase and it is indication uh, its indications are in the pain fracture uh, and different spinal uh, conditions okay. specifically the thoracic part the yes. middle part of the spine that is well covered with this and other very common braces if the lumbosacral belt it is uh, rigid semi rigid or hard belt and you might have seen that the very common if come on the different sizes and patient who are having the back pain continuously for that he can use that brace with the velcro strap and it well supported at the back sometimes patient requires the molded type of braces which can be made out of the different type of plastic if called low cost thermoplastic or this thing low temperature thermoplastic so we can just dip the plastic in the water and mold on the patient so that it will be total contact braces and very comfortable and if attached with the anterior velcro straps but uh, this uh, low temperature thermoplastic is very costly so sometimes we are not giving to the all the patient but uh, those who require we can give the lumbosacral belt out of or fit or some trade name aqua plastic some type of low temperature thermoplastic but easily available braces are the corset or some plastic braces which is commonly used purchase from the market or you can have the advice from the orthophys orthotip so that he can just made for you only so this is very common type of spinal braces and be very effective braces so uh, there was just one question <coughs> that i wanted to ask that you are describing uh, these various kinds of uh, braces and devices splints and so on and so forth the devices that are uh, and you talked about the fact that they are made from uh, plastic yes. really, you know, uh, so that they are lightweight and yes, this yes. is the modern uh, sort of free, easily available yes, material. Yes. Are these very expensive and if so, then how does the common man uh, yes, yes. avail of uh, uh, these kind of uh, devices? How do they See, get these to devices, this? orthotic and prosthetic devices are very costly, so we are having the scheme for the a uh, 50 devices scheme that is called ADP scheme in our ministry yes. and government of India is giving these appliances free of cost those person whose income is less than 6,000 6, rupees I think 6,500 6, 6, rupees so patients have to bring the income certificate and their photograph of the deformity or disability so we are giving these appliances free of cost and those person whose income is 6,501 to 10,000, we are gi giving 50% confession of the cost of the appliance. This is monthly income? Or that is monthly income. Monthly income. Monthly. Subsidy of 50% is given. Yes. Okay. And these are available with the government hospitals or from National Institute or our DDRC. Recently, we have developed from our ministry the District Disability Rehabilitation yes, Center. Uh, Mr. Sharma yes. has also yes, yes. associated. And also we are having the CRC, RRC. So these are all available at uh, all yes. these institutes uh, in addition to government hospitals. Where the uh, 
those who are getting granted aid from the Ministry of Social Justice, there are, since uh, it is implemented by the Ministry of Social Justice, uh, is the program of the Ministry of Social Justice and implemented by the implementing agency, those, those agencies who are having this scheme with them. Yes. So, they from them, they can get it free. Okay. So, that is the system. And under that scheme, uh, different types of aids and appliances uh, prosthetic and orthotic appliances, rehabilitation aids like tricycles, wheelchairs, crutches, walking sticks, blind canes, etc. All the, These are uh, the full yeah. range of assistive yeah, devices yeah. are available. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we can. We were talking about care of orthosis, care of orthosis. I think, <coughs> earlier before we moved on. Because we are very costly appliances. Person have to take care of yes, the orthosis. Yes, yes. How much do these uh, 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 appliances cost on an average? See, uh, uh, this varies from, uh, if you start from the cost of the shoe, uh, as per the general list, uh, general sense um, which I am giving, that starts from 500 and that goes to 5 lakhs also, uh, 10 lakhs also. Goodness. So, if yes. these are high tech uh, appliances, that costs that. Mm -hmm. but from the government side, the appliances, the focus is the quality uh, appliance should be given and that should be of the reasonable cost. Yes. So, the appliances which are costing rupees 6,000. Uh, there is a cap. Uh, yeah, yes. cap by the government. Uh, those are provided free. Okay. So, 6,000 is the cap for that. So, many of these uh, devices that you described earlier, these orthotic devices, are they within the 6,000 rupee uh, price bracket or are they more expensive? Yeah, if, uh, for general purposes like uh, in India, we have good number of uh, uh, PPRP cases. PPRP stands for post polio residual paralysis. Yes. Jinko uh, hum general term me polio kya dete hai. So, wo polio ke cases uh, Hindustan me bhot uh, matra me hai, jada matra me hai. Aur unhi ko hi dhyan me rakke edip scheme or uh, ye design ki gai hogi, wo important component raha hoga design karne ke liye. So, uh, uske liye calipers generally diye jate hai aur उसकी कॉस्ट जो है 6000 से कम ही आ जाती है अब हम आपको दिखाएंगे केयर ऑफ द ऑर्थोसिस के डिफरेंट पॉइंट्स के बारे में जैसे कैसे आपने उसका ध्यान रखना है जैसे आप देख रहे हैं चेक मूविंग जॉइंट्स ऑफ एंड ऑन जॉइंट्स जैसे कैलिपर्स में या स्प्लिंट्स में भी दिए जाते हैं उन जॉइंट्स को मरीज को समय समय पर चलाकर देखना चाहिए उसमें अगर ऑयलिंग की आवश्यकता है तो ऑयलिंग दें अगर उसको साफ करने की जरूरत है तो उसको साफ करके रखें देन वी हैव ऑल स्क्रूज नट्स एंड बोल्ट्स आर टू बी क्लीन डेली इफ नॉट डेली देन ऑन अल्टरनेट डेज बट ऑन रेगुलर इंटरवल्स इट नीड्स अ क्लीनिंग एंड चेकिंग देन वी हैव उसमें चमड़ा लगा हुआ होता है जिस लेदर लगा हुआ है तो लेदर की साफ सफाई की भी आवश्यकता होती है शूज जो कैलिपर में या अलग से शू इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं उसको पॉलिश किया हुआ इससे पॉलिश की जानी चाहिए और पानी और कीचड़ से या मिट्टी से उनको बचा के रखना चाहिए और जितना कहीं अगर आप सो रहे हैं तो बेहतर है कि उतार के सोएं क्योंकि वो आपके बॉडी को भी डैमेज कर सकता है या कहीं इरिटेट इरिटेशन आपको पैदा कर सकता है और उसकी जो डिज़ाइन है वो भी वो प्रभावित हो सकता है जिससे आप जो बॉडी मैकेनिक्स है या बॉडी बायो मैकेनिक्स है बॉडी का दैट मे गेट अफेक्टेड और उसकी जो पैडिंग है जैसे उसमें रबर की पैडिंग है वो अगर कहीं से उखड़ गई है तो उसको पेस्टिंग करवा लें या उसको रेगुलर इंटरवल पे साफ कर लें उसको और अगर आपको कहीं इरिटेशन लग रही है तो साफ करने के बाद में आप शू में या उस पैडिड पार्ट में टेलकम पाउडर भी यूज कर सकते हैं सो दैट इज वन uh, we've come to prosthetic devices. Uh, we've prosthetic discussed dev orthotic devices. Orthotic devices. Or we mutually these uh, terms prosthetics and orthotics are quite uh, interchangeable. Uh, not interchangeable, mm -hmm. but quite inter uh, dependent or interrelated. So uh, at times we'll be using uh, both the terms. Okay. So uh, because in India uh, the general practice is uh, there is a specialist who is for prosthetics and orthotics for both, both. Okay. in because western world together uh, in western world or in some of the uh, certificate level programs uh, there are uh, these two subjects are taken as different but uh, in general in degree level programs uh, these are or at the diploma level also these are uh, 
टुगेदर 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 दोनों ही चलते हैं अभी तक हम लोग ने जो डिस्कस किया था वो ऑर्थेटिक यानी की उसकी लिम भी है पर हमने उसको सपोर्ट किया या करेक्शन किया हुआ है Now we are going for the prosthetic side. What is prosthetic? Prosthetic में मैं आपको बताना चाहूँगा. Prosthetic the replacement of the body part artificially which you give the function and cost benefit. जैसे कि अगर limbs हमारे upper extremity और lower extremity हैं. अगर pair cut गया है, तो वो कटे हुए pair को हम दोबारा फिर नहीं ला सकते. पर उसको हमको artificially बनाना पड़ता है. वो बनाने के लिए prosthetic signs का उपयोग होता है. और उसको हम लोग बिल्कुल natural तरीके से बनाते हैं. उसके अंदर जो भी फिजिक्स या साइंस या बायोमैकेनिक्स लगती है उसको हम ध्यान में रखते हुए बना सकते हैं और वो आदमी नॉर्मल जहाँ तक हो सकता है अपने आप को नॉर्मल फील करता है तो प्रोस्थेटिक में भी लोअर एक्सट्रीमिटी और अपर एक्सट्रीमिटी जैसे ऑर्थेटिक्स में है उसी तरीके से अपर एक्सट्रीमिटी को हम पहले डिस्कस करते हैं कि वॉट आर द डिफरेंट लेवल ऑफ एम्पुटेशन इन दी अपर एक्सट्रीमिटी उसके बाद हम लोअर एक्सट्रीमिटी में आएंगे तो ये हाथ से हम लोग क्या क्या काम कर सकते हैं तो डेफिनेशन आप देख रहे हैं मॉनिटर पे जैसे आप देख रहे हैं प्रोस्थेटिक डिवाइसेस जो है आ, उस जिसका सिनोनिमस प्रोस्थेसिस भी होता है आ, ये ग्रीक वर्ड से इसको लिया गया है आ, इसके कंपोनेंट्स है प्रोस इसका विच मींस इन एडिशन टू एंड देन दैट इज दैट मीन दैट दैट इज टू पुट ऑन एंड टिक्स मीन सिस्टमेटिक परस्यूट so it's a systematic pursuit of putting in addition to is called prosthetics so it's an art and it's an science also simultaneously so it's an art as well as science and it's a replacement of the uh, body part uh, lost body part so here i would like to mention about the nomenclature of the prosthetic uh, prosthetic parts and uh, Before that, I would like to mention the amputation levels, different amputation levels. Upper extremity. Uh, start with the upper. So first we have partial uh, hand amputation. Then we have wrist disarticulation. Uh, then we have wrist disarticulation. Then we have below elbow amputation. Then we have elbow disarticulation. Uh, then above elbow amputation, wrist disarticulation, and four quarter, quarter amputation. So these are the different levels of. amputation in upper extremity likewise in lower extremity uh, we have uh, four uh, hip disarticulation then we have we have above knee amputation then knee disarticulation then below elbow amputation and then uh, ankle. ankle amputation or ankle disarticulation we call it then partial foot amputations so disarticulation is really uh, another word for amputation here disarticulation when the uh, through uh, joint uh, through when the uh part is removed or limb is removed at the level of the joint okay. then it is called disarticulation like we have uh, the term articulation that is synonymous to the joint okay uh, then we have disarticulations I when see. the articulation is broken or taken out that is disarticulation so it is like that okay so different jo prosthetic designs hain jaise lower extremity mein hum dekhenge कि प्रोस्थेटिक्स में दो तरह के प्रोस्थेटिक्स बनते हैं एक तो है इंटरनल प्रोस्थेसिस और एक है एग्जो स्केलेटन और एक्सटर्नल प्रोस्थेसिस तो ये दो टाइप के जो प्रोस्थेसिस हैं उसमें एक तो वो प्रोस्थेसिस है जिसका आउटिंग आउटर कवरिंग है जो एग्जो स्केलेटन प्रोस्थेसिस कहते हैं और इंटरनल प्रोस्थेसिस में एक एंडो टाइप के प्रोस्थेसिस होते हैं जो आगे फिर शरीर के अंदर हम फिट नहीं वो अलग प्रोस्थेसिस है ये वो अलग टाइप के प्रोसेस हैं मैं जो हमारे प्रोस्थेटिक्स हैं उसमें दो टाइप के होते हैं एंडो स्केलेटन एंड एग्जो स्केलेटन एंडो स्केलेटन जिसके अंदर एक पायलोन टाइप का पाइप लग जाता है जॉइंट वगैरह लग जाते हैं और एग्जो स्केलेटन में एक आउटर शेल आ जाती है जो लकड़ी के या प्लास्टिक के बनाए जाते हैं तो ये दो टाइप के प्लास्टिक हैं और दूसरे जो प्रोसेस हैं वो ऑर्थोपेडिक सर्जन यूज करते हैं जो इंटरनल पार्ट वगैरह रिप्लेसमेंट करते हैं जैसे आपकी नी नी का रिप्लेसमेंट है या हिप का रिप्लेसमेंट है वो अलग टाइप के प्रोसेसिस हैं 
वो इससे कंसर्न नहीं है वो अलग टाइप के हैं जैसे आपके स्क्रीन पे अभी वो ये एग्जो स्केलेटल आप जो कह रहे हैं ये दिस इज एन एग्जांपल ऑफ दैट काइंड ये जो आप देख रहे हैं स्क्रीन पे ये एग्जो स्केलेटन है ये लकड़ी के बनाए हुए हैं प्लास्टिक को री एनफोर्समेंट किया गया है और इसके ऊपर एक फैच फुट लगा हुआ है और जो ये बिलो बिलोनी प्रोसेस जिसके अंदर हमने नाप लेके सारे हमने प्लस माइनस देख रखे हैं कहाँ वेट देना है कहाँ वेट नहीं देना है उसके मुताबिक ये लिम बनी है और एक फैट फुट यानी सॉलिड एंकल कुशन हिल जो कि एक पंजा इसके अंदर लगाया हुआ है और वो पंजे के सारे इसको हमने अलाइनमेंट करके इसको फिट किया हुआ है इसकी सस्पेंशन के लिए ज्यादा करके हम लोग मूले स्ट्रैप यूज करते हैं और ये एग्जो स्केलेटन टाइप की प्रोसेस है इसी के अंदर अगर एंडो स्केलेटन होगा तो वो पायलोन टाइप का बनेगा जो आप देख रहे हैं सामने उसमें सॉकेट का डिजाइन बिल्कुल वैसे ही बना हुआ है और बाद में इसको हमने एक्सटेंशन के तौर पर पायलन या लगा हुआ है और इसको फैट फुट में अटैच किया हुआ है और ये जो आपको जो पायलन का जो पार्ट दिख रहा है उस पायलन पार्ट को हम लोग बाद में फोम से कवर कर देते हैं जिसको हम कॉस्मेटिक कवरिंग कहते हैं तो ये आपका एंडो स्केलेटन टाइप की प्रोसेस ये दो टाइप के प्रोसेस इस तरीके से बनते हैं तो ये दोनों ही प्रोसेस का जो मैकेनिज्म है वो बिल्कुल एक ही जैसा है और ज्यादा करके हम लोग इसके अंदर टोटल कॉन्टेक्ट सॉकेट यानी जैसे बिलो बिलोनी के अंदर तो पीटीबी टाइप पटेला टेंडन बियरिंग या पीटीएफ पटेला टेंडन सुपरा कॉन्डलर टाइप के प्रोसेस बनाते हैं और ये दोनों ही पेशेंट को करीब करीब आप उसको नॉर्मल तरीके से ही चल लेते हैं वो लोग और दीज आर वेरी कॉमन क्योंकि हमारे जितने भी लोअर एक्टिविटी के एम्पटेशन केसेज आते हैं उसमें फिफ्टी परसेंट हमारे पास बिलोनी एम्पटेशन के होते हैं और जो चालीस परसेंट है वो अबाउनी प्रोसेस के होते हैं जो कि घुटने से ऊपर कटे हुए होते हैं और बिलोनी बहुत कॉमन है और बिलोनी के पेशेंट मेरे ख्याल पे बिल्कुल नॉर्मल के तरीके से ही चल लेते हैं उनको हाथ में बैसाखी लेके चलने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ती और काफ़ी बिलोनी इस तरीके होते हैं जिनको आप देख के पहचान भी नहीं सकते कि उनके पैर कटा हुआ है भी है या नहीं है अब आपको जैसा आप स्क्रीन पर देख रहे हैं अपर एक्सटिविटी प्रोसेस के डिफरेंट टाइप्स आपको दिखाए गए हैं लिखे गए हैं जैसे फिंगर प्रोसेस है जैसा कि नाम से जाहिर है फिंगर ऑर्थोसिस जिस व्यक्ति का उंगली कट गई है चार उंगलियों में से कोई उंगली कट गई है उसको फिंगर प्रोसेस दी जाती है और या थम प्रोसेस भी हम दे सकते हैं और ये आजकल ऐसे ऐसे मटेरियल अवेलेबल हैं हाई एडवांस मटेरियल्स हैं जिसको जिससे उंगली बनाने के बाद में या अंगूठा नकली बनाने के बाद में हम फिट करें तो एकदम से कोई पहचान नहीं पाएगा कि ये असली है या नकली है और उनकी फंक्शनल वैल्यू भी होती है काफ़ी सारे केसेस हमारे पास ऐसे आते रहे हैं जो मैरिजेस के अंदर जिनका पार्शियल फुट हैंड एम्पुटेशन है और वो कॉस्मेटिक हैंड यूज करके या कॉस्मेटिक ग्लव यूज करके उन्होंने अपनी मैरिजेस परफॉर्म की है अच्छा। या दूसरी सेरेमनीज परफॉर्म की है ये इंटरेस्टिंग लगेगा किसी को पता भी नहीं चलता है कि किसी को पता भी नहीं चलता है क्योंकि ज्वाइन अगर फिंगर प्रोसेस हम देते हैं वो लगाने के बाद में ऊपर से रिंग पहनने के बाद में वो ज्वाइंट के ऊपर रिंग आ जाती है तो उसका जो जहाँ वो मिल रहा होता है मेटीरियल और बॉडी की स्किन जहाँ मिल रही ज्वाइन कर रही होती है उसको वो रिंग कवर कर लेती है अच्छा काफी सारे लोग कॉस्मेटिक है ग्लव्स पहन के आ, अपनी अलग एक्टिविटीज कर लेते हैं जैसे किसी से हाथ मिलाना है तो वो कॉम्प्लेक्सेस भी रिमूव करता है तो जो प्रोस्थेटिक साइड है उसमें ये एक एडवांटेज ये है कि वो साइकोलॉजिकल आस्पेक्ट को भी कवर करके चलता है Okay. तो जैसा आप स्क्रीन में देखेंगे बिलो एल्बो प्रोसेस हम आपको दिखा रहे थे इसमें ऊपर आप कपड़े की टेप एक देख रहे हैं जिसको हम हार्नेस कहते हैं हार्नेस भी दो तरह की होती है वन इज ऑफ द फिगर ऑफ एट बिलो एल्बो प्रोसेस की मैं बात कर रहा हूँ वन इज ऑफ फिगर ऑफ नाइन एंड फॉर अपर एक्सटिविटी प्रोसेस फॉर अब एल्बो इट इज इन द शेप ऑफ फिगर ऑफ एट एंड वेन इट इज बायोलेट्रल इट इज ऑफ द फिगर ऑफ द एट <coughs> जैसा आप देख रहे हैं मैकेनिकल इलेक्ट्रिकल और मायो इलेक्ट्रिकल ये तीन तरह की प्रोसेसेस का क्लासिफिकेशन हम कर सकते हैं उनकी फंक्शनल वैल्यू को ध्यान में रखते हुए मैकेनिकल जो है ये कन्वेंशनल और क्रूड सिस्टम या कन्वेंशनल या इंडिजिनस डिजाइन आप कह सकते हैं इलेक्ट्रिकल और मायो इलेक्ट्रिकल दिस इज द एडवांस वर्जन आजकल सॉरी कंप्यूटराइज प्रोसेस भी है जो इसमें मैंशन नहीं किया गया है Uh, लेकिन हाईटेक और एडवांस प्रोसेसेस 
जो रोबोटिक्स टेक्नोलॉजी है उसको ध्यान में रखकर डिजाइन किया बायोनिक आर्म्स का जैसे पिछले दिनों काफी न्यूज में भी था इस तरह के प्रयोग फिटमेंट के किए जा रहे हैं जो कि दोनों हाथ अगर कटे हुए हैं उसको भी आर्म लगा के आर्टिफिशियल आर्म्स लगा के काफी एक्टिविटीज को परफॉर्म किया जा सकता है इनफैक्ट uh, आप ये बात कर रहे हैं तो कुछ देर पहले uh, हमारे कोलीग uh, एक बता रहे थे कि ही नोज समबडी हु डज नॉट हैव बोथ आर्म्स एंड बोथ लेग्स फॉर इंस्टेंस ही हैज मेट समबडी लाइक दैट इन हिज कम्युनिटी तो ऐसे uh, अगर किस कोई है जो हु इज एफेक्टेड लाइक दिस वुड प्रोस्थेटिक Uh, device like this uh, be of help say if he needs ab jo bilateral bhi kehte hain it can be given to both sides both sides yes so for both legs and arms these can be fitted and the person can be uh, enabled to uh, move around uh, yes. like uh, I, i know a person who is uh, bilateral below elbow amputee और वो कपड़ा बेचने का काम करता है जी. वो फरीदाबाद में रहता है और दिल्ली आता है सुबह कपड़ा लेके शाम को बेच के जो भी हाँ, फिर वापस जाता है और वो बिलो वो प्रोसेसेस का इस्तेमाल करता है हमने उनका प्रोसेसेस बनवाया है वो काफी समय से इस्तेमाल कर रहा है ही इज वेरी सक्सेसफुल मैं ऐसे व्यक्तियों को भी जानता हूँ जो कि अपर एक्सटिविटी प्रोसेसेस यूज करने के बाद में लिखने का काम कर सकते हैं ड्राइविंग भी ड्राइविंग भी कर सकते हैं दे आर वेरी सीनियर पीपल इन द गवर्नमेंट ऑल्सो आई नो समी हु इज इन वेरी सीनियर पोजिशन हु इज ए साइंटिस्ट using upper extremity processes and driving the car also there is another question we could <coughs> have a caller who is called from chennai i'll just take the call hello 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 yes ma'am bilaterally ak amputee how to measure the limb length ma'am can you explain this ma'am can you just repeat the question for a bilateral Bilate, bilateral ak amputee AK amputee. How to measure the limb length? Okay, uh, this question is from Chennai also. So they are asking AK. that if for an, a bilateral AK amputee, how do you measure the limb length? Would you be able to answer this question? For a bilateral AK amputee, how to measure the limb length? ज्यादा करके तो एम्पुटेशन जब होता है तो भाई इसकी उम्र देखी जाती है उम्र में अगर मान लो उसको पहले से अपने अगर हाइट मालूम है तो उसका अंदाजा लग जाता है कि उसकी कितनी हाइट है उसकी थोड़ी सी कम रखे तो अच्छा रहेगा और एक ही एम्पुटेशन में ज्यादा करके स्टेबिलिटी के लिए हम लोग पहले एक स्टबीफ टाइप की यानी छोटी लिम देते हैं छोटी लिम से जब उसका बैलेंस बन जाता है तो उसको दूसरी लिम दी जा सकती है और जहाँ तक लिम की लेंथ का सवाल है लिंथ की अगर उसके पेशेंट को अगर अपनी पैर के पुरानी हाइट मालूम है तो किया जा सकता है उसकी हाइट कितनी थी तो फिर थोड़ी सी कम रख के भी दे दे दी जाए तो अच्छा है so in bilateral ak amputee the length of the limb is measured from the groin to the distal end so uh, that is uh, the measurement criteria uh, when you see from the longitudinal length point of view and uh, if you talk about the measurement further though it the, that is not par- part of the question but i would like to mention then the circumferential measurements are also taking uh, taken for making the processes along with the cast taking or nowadays there is scanning techniques also there we need not required to measure the length manually we can scan it the stump we can send it through the mail as an attachment and it can be uh, made at some other place also that is a cad cam technology that's a different subject uh, of uh, prosthetics and orthotics okay i hope this uh, <coughs> answers uh, your question uh, for the caller and if you wish to ask any more questions or clarify further please call in again we can continue uh, yeah what we were discussing so the, the, it will you will see on the screen this lower extremity processes so we had uh, i would like to mention here that we had general discussions in between also and we are going as per the slide also so uh, you will have textual uh, part as well as the in discussion or in references it is there 
so you see uh, they there is one above knee processes or it is given for in fact it was given for below knee amputation but the design of the processes was uh, above knee design along with the orthotic knee joints so uh, you can see the integration of processes and orthosis in this the joints which are used in this are of orthotic knee joint uh, whereas the they are applied in processes as a part of the processes the amputee was having short below knee amputation uh, it, the, that means the length of the stump from below the knee level was from uh, 2 to 3 inches so it was very short so in this uh, this case a, a different uh, type of design was made uh, and the socket the upper part uh, the socket design is quadrilateral socket and it is distant opening socket it is open from the distant end also you can see it and uh, the lower part of the processes that is the shin part that uh, incorporates or that has the special design and is made out of the wood. So this is an AK processes or knee disarticulation processes design uh, which has been applied for the below knee amputee. So this is sort of integration of. Uh, so in this example yeah. as you are showing then the, the knee joint is an, or, an orthotic, orthotic element. knee joint which has been utilized for okay. making the processes. To enable uh, the movement and give the support at the knee to the person. Yeah, uh, not only as a support, uh, it, it is an integral component okay. of the processes. I see. <coughs> that is uh, required, very much required and it is adding uh, to it. So uh, in this case we can't give uh, the conventional prosthetic knee joint because in that case the uh, height of the or the length of the processes will be more. So from technical considerations we have to made modifications. I see. So that is, uh, so that is all and uh, uh, next this is as you will see on the screen the below knee processes that we have already discussed then uh, this is the posterior medial view of the above knee processes then uh, some uh, some points regarding care of processes we as we talked about care of orthosis earlier uh, the same points or more or less similar points are for care of uh, processes then you can see as we are talking about rehabilitation aids or mobility aids under the edit uh, discussion and under the, you can see uh, two friends going on wheelchairs enjoying participating, discussing. So these, this is the significant contribution to the individual's life that has been shown in this picture. And uh, you see walking aids, as Dr. Anga mentioned you uh, about the uh, an amputee who uses the processes as well as uh, the orthosis also. Orthosis in the sense, crutches are the part of the orthotic system. Prosthesis is the part of the prosthetic system. So crutches are used simultaneously with the orthosis during the trial phase and uh, there are different types of other walking aids also like monopod we have, tripod we have, quadripod we have. Pod is synonymous to uh, uh, the foot, the base level that is synonymous. So the number of bases we have uh, the, uh, yes. and that is like tripod means three uh, bases, uh, two, uh, quadripods means, quadri means four four bases so uh, that it's like that when then would when would you use say a monopod or a tripod or a quadrupod in what situation it depends depends uh, how much support you need to give uh, or you need to provide to the patient i see or the amputee because the area of supportive board patient is more stable stable this is the idea behind the giving tri tripod tetrapod okay see here would i would like to mention that generally people take crutches or walking sticks and they use it uh, scientifically, there are uh, specific anatomical levels with which this orthosis has to be matched. Like the uh, hand grip of the crutch, it should be uh, maintained as such that the elbow should remain at the angle of 30 degrees. So that is the most stable position and it is the position where you uh, uh, require minimum energy to spend on. Okay. So if you compare uh, just to give you a general sense to the masses uh, that uh, if you uh, compare it with the mid of the pocket uh, of the pant, it comes to the that level more or less. Okay. So that is a general sense. So uh, that is the level of the hand grip of we the crutches as well as the walking stick. We have another question uh, caller calling in. 
Hello. Hello, yes. Ma'am, we are calling from Spastic Society of Tamil Nadu, Chennai. Yes, thank you. You are obviously listening. We are getting a lot of questions from Spastic Society. Yeah, ma'am. Ha, we have one doubt, ma'am. Yeah. Please ask what your question. What is mean by pedas? What is meant by? Pedas. Can you repeat that? P-A-T-D-A-S. 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 Okay, yes, I think that was there in an earlier example. What is meant by P-A-T-D-A? Uh, if you go back to an earlier slide of yours, yes. Oh, the, this is uh, patadas, in fact. Patadas. <laughs> it might you might have seen at the uh, the traffic light. Okay. Some person they are using the four casters. And, and they're sitting on a sitting on that. Move, they move very fast. Do their <laughs> mobility. <laughs> this is called patada. This is very <laughs> common. This thing word in northern side. It's called <laughs> patla. Patada. 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 So, uh, that is will make ground a level mobility. Ground, device. ground level mobility, mobility, yes. So, in that case, when they move forward, they use their hands. And they, they can run very, uh, very fast. Move they very move fast. very fast, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. the very common terminology in Northern fight, patadas. Yeah, it's really a Hindi word then yeah, in Hindi that word, sense. Yeah, that so, really uh, very common. I hope uh, you can uh, relate to what they are describing and... Uh, uh, see, uh, refer to a similar sort of uh, gadget that must be used even in uh, the other part of the different parts of the country in the southern part also, which is basically a, a rectangular, a, a uh, rectangular uh, platform wheel. with wooden. wheels, with wheels, yes, which, uh, and attached to four casters, with four four caster wheels, which a person can use to and move. And with around. a very good ball bearing, so that they move very fast. Okay. And in a very small space, they can just turn their definitely move. Uh, and it's probably a very useful device in, say, a rural setting and particularly within a home yes, setting. Yes, home. yes. Uh, for, uh, for a specifically for uh, uh, above uh, knee amputees. Yeah, and persons with, uh, uh, you know, low diplegia yes. or lower, le lower limb yeah, yeah, uh, disabilities yeah. Yeah. who find it easier rather than bottom shuffling which yeah, yeah, would be yeah, a yeah, term, yeah. That, I mean a way for them to move around if they sit on something like this, yeah. they might find it easier to move faster. Yeah, but these are not a standard appliances. Uh, these are not the standard. Okay. Yeah. We can uh, so we were discussing about uh, different types of uh, walking aids. So you'll see it on the screen uh, as monopod, uh, we have discussed tripod, quadripod, and we were talking about the crutches from where we shifted to the hand grip levels. So the crutches <coughs> are basically of three types. Uh, one is elbow crutches, axillary crutches, and uh, the walking sticks are also supportive devices. That's the third category. And uh, we have walkers. We have rollators also. Rollators are generally given for children. Okay. Then you can see on the screen the hand propelled uh, wheelchair. That's a mobility device. Uh, you, it's of two types, folding as well as non-folding. So, uh, and it's electronically operated also and motorized also. So in India, uh, in general, under, under ADIP scheme, uh, government is through the government uh, the agencies are providing uh, folding uh, wheelchairs which are generally given uh, rarely in non, non folding wheelchairs are also given and uh, you can see the uh, person going uh, to the diff public garden. Uh, pa yeah public uh, places public places uh, with the help of wheelchairs and it's a battery operated uh, wheelchair and uh, it's a little bit costly, is, uh, but it's available worldwide. And it's available. These are available in India also. These in India, uh, battery also, yes. operated. Yes, uh, it's available, and people are using it. Those who can afford, they are using. It. What is the price range of uh, wheelchairs? Yeah. Twenty-five thousand. Uh, uh, that's very expensive, and as uh, wheelchairs from two thousand onwards are also available. Sometimes one thousand five hundred wheelchairs are also are also yeah. available. Uh, well, these are available. And uh, are there any steps being taken to make uh, these devices, including wheelchairs and, uh, 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 you know, all the crutches and so on, from locally available materials and low-cost, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, yeah, like yeah, bamboo, efforts, bamboo yes, we have. Yes. Uh, you know, yeah. what is easily available in say rural areas, which so that the person does not have to depend on going to a, a, a distant See, uh, here, uh, institution. I like, here uh, I would like to uh, share my thought that now the scenario of Indian scenario has changed. Now the rural part is not the remotest part or it is not aloof from the rest of the world. Now the technology is moving uh, throughout the nation. So uh, now the need of making the crutches out of the bamboo stick or uh, bamboo crutches, that is not, uh, in general I can say it is not required because outreach camps have been organized uh, through the government or through other uh, agencies from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, the government is working under Adip scheme providing aids and appliances through camps. <coughs> the measurements are taken and delivered at the doorsteps. So <coughs> now situ uh, the situations are different from the situations which were there 30 years back. So in this advanced stage, uh, the appliances are available and if required, uh, uh, ordinary carpenter can make the crutches out of the available, locally available wood. Yes, it is quite possible. Mm. One can do that. So uh, you can again uh, see on the screen the hand driven and motorized tricycles. <laughs> Dr. Ranga would like to mention. Uh, See, actually these tricycles now where, wherever we are conducting camp, so usually maximum person, their problem with the mobility. So okay. they require tricycle to go for a job or for, for, for school or, so this tricycle is very common for the handicapped person and they are taking this tricycle under the ADIP, in the, uh, ADIP scheme and that this in ADIP scheme we are giving free of cost and this is the standard tricycle. That means we are using the BIF standard to make these uh, tricycles and I think in the camp is very common. The maximum person they are coming for, not for the aids and appliances, but they are coming for the tricycles and wheelchair because maximum disabled patient they want to do some vocational program for some other or they want to go for a school or going for a job. So I think tricycle is a very common and very, uh, I think, important item for them. And if the person is having the mobility, he can also have a thing earning. But do you think that uh, the, the tricycle is uh, appropriate in certain settings only and uh, becomes too big perhaps to offer? Is it normally given only in say rural outdoor. areas and for people who need the, uh, tricycle for, for the outdoor activity? Okay. It is just like a rickshaw. Yes. Very, in Delhi also the rickshaw is very common. Yes. So this is just like a rickshaw and it is a hand propelled. But in tricycle we have to see first while doing the assessment of the patient, the person have must have the upper extremity very strong. Yes, absolutely. If the upper extremity is strong, then only he can pull the tricycle or where there is a slope or something, yes. he can use the tricycle very effectively. Yes. I think one, uh, one needs to be a little cautious about uh, uh, giving these tricycles uh, out, uh, you know, after assessing the actual abilities yes. and the needs of the person because uh, there have been instances, I think, uh, because this is so easily available yes. and it is the standard thing that is given out at most of the outreach uh, sort of camps Activities, and, yes. uh, you know, uh, uh, programs that are run that sometimes it becomes a little indiscriminately distributed. and. Uh, one has heard of instances of uh, very young children also being given a tricycle. Uh, maybe a very young child, uh, you know, it, it may be an inap inappropriate gadget to give because then the child, although they do not have that much strength, but because they can use it, they go out onto the road. Yeah, actually, we are and, having two uh, type of tricycle, but the small tricycle for the school going children. Okay, that is, and is the that adult also. children. Yes. Okay. There were two tricycles are available. And this is also available with the government of India, uh, this thing, Artificial Limb Manufacturing Corporation of India. And they are giving at the campsite, yes. wherever we are doing the camp, yes. so this is very easily available. So assessment will be done by a rehabilitation professional or some orthopedician or some doctors. And then after the assessment, if we see that he found fit and he have to do some activity with the tricycle, then only we are giving. And we are also giving tricycle along with the prosthetic and orthotic aids. Suppose we are giving the… Yes, ideally it should yes. be uh, yes. a, a co yes. complementary yes. to the actual Correct. need yes. which is the… Along with that yes. it has Suppose the person is having the bilateral amputation and he is using the bilateral limb, 
he cannot walk about four or five kilometer. So we are giving tricycle. For that, he will just have a tricycle and go to the job. Yes. So this is the idea behind the giving of the tricycle. Now we are also having the motorized tricycles. That is also very common in Delhi. Also, is very common, but that is very costly. So, or some patient they are the attaching the mot motor on the tricycle and using this. So this is very common. Mm. And the hand driven uh, tricycle, uh, that uh, that that again are of two types: uh, right hand driven tricycles as well as left hand driven tricycles for children. So these are available. Okay. Then uh, we'll speak uh, something about uh, ADL appliances, as you will see on the screen. So these are uh, the this is a list of uh, ADL appliances. So the first one is CP chair. CP as you, uh, you may be knowing, CP stands for cerebral palsy. So, so this is a cerebral palsy. If the time will permit, we'll go in detail of uh, the CP chair. Uh, then we have Como chair. We have shower chair, long handled brush. Uh, that is one of the adaptation which can be used in the case of hemiplegics. Adhrang jaise hote hain, unke liye use kiya ja sakta hai. Brush ki jagah kuch aur adaptation mein istemal ki ja sakti hai. Then we have reachers. Uh, reachers, agar dur se koi object aapne uthana hai aur aapka haath nahi ja raha hai, to usko pakarne ke liye, grip karke lane ke liye istemal jo adaptation hoti hai, usko reachers keh dete hain. और यूनिवर्सल कफ आ, है मॉडिफाइड यूटेंसिल्स है ऑर्डिनरी बर्तन होते हैं लेकिन उनको मॉडिफाई कर दिया जाता है व्हाट इज अ यूनिवर्सल कफ दैट यू मेंशनड हियर वुड यू लाइक टू यूनिवर्सल कफ इज द टर्मिनोलॉजी यूज्ड फॉर फास्टनिंग पर्पस सी इफ यू हैव अ सॉर्ट ऑफ बैंड यू कैन से व्हेन यू योर पर्सन इज नॉट हैविंग द अपर एक्सट्रीमिटी एंड यू वांट टू डू द पेंटिंग So oh, you just okay. have a cup and just attach the adaptations there adaptation. and you can do the painting or writing the things with oh, the cup. It's called yeah. other, it's a very uh, common uh, word. Yeah, yeah. There was a person uh, who was an amputee. He used to work most of his activities uh, with, with the help of this small uh, strap, uh, strap or bed you can say. Okay. So, okay. so this is one. Then, so... Uh, should we go for multi-purpose uh, chair for the uh, disabled? We can discuss this. Okay. We are in a. We will just take a very short break uh, while uh, for some technical reasons, and then we'll be back uh, immediately afterwards. I request our viewers also to continue watching. We'll be back in a couple of minutes, and we'll continue our discussion on this topic of prosthet uh, prosthetics and orthotics introduction and practice. <laughs> 